The Tao of Self-Confidence, episode 695. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have an amazing lady on the show today. She is an entertainer, and I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Kulap Vilay Sak. Kulap, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Sure. First off, I want to say, Sheena, you've got a great voice. It's rich. got a great tone. You should feel good about it. I, uh, yes, my name is Kula Abdelaisak. I am a, a jack of all trades, and that trade is, is gosh, <laughs> I am a writer, director, producer, performer, actor, former podcaster, community organizer, and, you know, like a good friend. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Kula, what's your cultural background? My family is from the country of Laos, and... So that's my cultural background, Lao American, but then my ethnic background, as I knew it, was Lao, Thai, South Asian, Indian, and Chinese. And then my my 23andMe just updated, and apparently I'm like majority Vietnamese, so. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? Okay, okay, so this is, this is, I'm going to read to you a poem by Mary Oliver, and it's called The Journey, and it goes like this. <laughs> One day you finally knew what you had to do, and began, though the voices around you kept shouting their bad advice, though the whole house began to tremble, and you felt the old tug at your ankles. Men, my life, each voice cried, but you didn't stop. You knew what you had to do, though the wind pried with its stiff fingers at the very foundations, though their melancholy was terrible. It was already late enough and a wild night and the road full of fallen branches and stones. But little by little, as you left their voices behind, the stars began to burn through the sheets of clouds and there was a new voice, which you slowly recognized as your own. That kept you company as you strode deeper and deeper into the world, determined to do the only thing you could do, determined to save the only life you could save. Thanks for sharing that. And Kulap, in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? To me, self-confidence is being comfortable in your own skin. You allow yourself to take space, and that space doesn't encroach upon others. To me, confidence is doing no harm and taking no shit. To me, confidence is a state of mind, a state of being. It's the ability to breathe through everything. Thanks for sharing that great definition. And what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Well, I think that's, I mean, it's such a broad, because I I, I don't know. I don't know if self-confidence is a, I think, like learning and like healing, it's a lifetime of of work and I don't think it's like you reach some sort of confidence finish line so I don't know where the definitive line is for me in that in that thought process but you know doubting oneself and and it just takes a lot of energy to to doubt oneself and to not love yourself and to not believe in yourself and that that energy that is used with that mindset could be put towards creating and being the kind of person that you want to be. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, what was that point in your life, especially like, you know, being an entertainer, doing the things that you do today? Like, what was that aha moment to give you that confidence to go out there and do it? I don't think there's ever, I think, I think there is, (laughs) there's a, a, a constellation of, of many moments. It's being brave and putting yourself out there and and even though being a performer is about doing that sometimes we are too scared to be vulnerable and time sometimes we're too worried about being humiliated and when you get to a place where it it it's harder to not tell the truth maybe that's that's an aha moment 
Thanks for sharing that. And I think that's something we all go through, right? Especially that worry. We feel like people are always looking at us, constantly criticizing us, not realizing like, you know, that does happen, especially when you're doing something that you love. But, you know, no matter what, they're just words. And sometimes those people are just scared too. And when you just go out there and show them that you can do it, you know, instead of them, you know, instead of people like thinking you the worst of you, they're actually cheering you on. Because even though if you're making mistakes and falling down, you're still picking yourself back up and you keep going. And, you know, because of that realization, what's your life been like now? Well, it's just to kind of add to what you were saying before, you know, well, first of all, I would say it's like self-confidence and, and overcoming self-doubt is like, instead of there being sort of one aha moment, I think it's it's a pattern and a and a practice. And there could be one, you know, sure, there could be you could distill and think about like one like origin story. But in truth, it's the it's the small things that you do every day. It's when you have you're having interactions with people and you feel uncomfortable and you decide to talk to that person about it really close to the time you felt uncomfortable. That's an act of of, you know, of sticking up for yourself. And by doing that, you open the path to maybe it was maybe it was a misunderstanding, maybe it wasn't, but then you can have a conversation, right? And I think about like when I first the early days of Bajillion Dollar Properties, the show that I created that is now on Pluto TV. And I think about how nervous I was and how much self-doubt I had about being the showrunner, about being in charge and this fear that I wasn't prepared and I wasn't ready. And, you know, that feeling made me feel like uh, it's going to get taken away from me. My my other EPs don't have confidence in me and they're going to they're going to take it away from me. And CISO is going to take it away from me, the the network that bought it originally. And I I, I was grasping to this position because I was so so insecure about it. And that insecurity brought this like energy. And someone told me that like, you don't need to grasp your pen until you're white knuckled to prove that it's yours. If it's your pen, and you put it on your desk, and you don't touch it, it's your pen. And that was a, a kind of symbolic lesson that I had to learn. And when I realized that literally everybody that I had fears and doubts they're there to support me. They want me to do well. They're betting on me to do well. And when I made that shift, it was like, oh, okay. It's like I accepted what really truly was support. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I think that's great. You were able to have that mind shift because, you know, it, it, it really does start from like the inside and the way we think and the way we see and perceive things, right? I mean, when we have a big project that comes out, we always feel like we're never enough or, you know, we can't like do the work or not do the work, feel like we're not enough, but really we are more than enough. You know, we were chosen, you know, for that same reason, right? Because they see something in us. They see that we can do it. We are capable and we just have to show it, right? Show up and do and put the work in and like what you did, right? Even though you were scared, you realized like, you know, you, you were chosen for a reason and you went ahead and did it and you got more love than you realized, more support than you realized. So I think that's great. And for listeners who are listening to your episode and, you know, they're in a similar journey, what would be that one tip you'd give to them? It would be to save the only life you could save, which is your own. Thanks for sharing that great tip. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do and check out some of your work, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at at Kulap. That's my first name. On Instagram at I A M Kulap. I am Kulap. And then my website is kulapvlifesock.com. Thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Kulap, you can also head on over to the TauofSelfConfidence.com and search for Kulap's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Kulap today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Kulap. Thank you. Not a problem. It was really great having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Want to learn how you can use podcasting to market your business? Download your free report by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.